Hi, my name is Michael Atman with Iconasys. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating our Shutterstream 360 product photography software when working with a shutter release turntable. Now, just to explain a little bit, a shutter release turntable is a turntable with built-in shutter release port. Typically, these allow you to choose uh, the number of different steps you want to take per full 360 revolution and uh, I'll just communicate a little bit more about the shutter release 360 turntable shooting mode inside of the Shutterstream 360 software. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is obviously connect our shutter release cable into our turntable and with this turntable specifically what I've been able to do is I've selected take a picture every 15 degrees that will be a total of 24 frames per 360. Um, I have my camera here I'm going to connect that via USB and I will just set up my front lights as well we're working with our LumiPad 360 lighting system uh, they're high CRI LED bulbs uh, and uh, basically consists of two front light panels along with a backlight LED panel. So I'm going to power on my camera and we'll go ahead and launch the software. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to see here is after we connect our camera, and let me just zoom out my camera, um, we're going to see it enables a real-time preview of what our camera sees. So what I want to do is take my object and position it in the center of the turntable. So I'm going to look and kind of get a bird's eye view over top of my turntable to ensure that uh, position the object as visually in the center as possible. And the nice thing about it in the software, we do have these guidelines that can kind of help with the, uh, the positioning. Now let me just move in my lights just a tad. You're going to see them come in in the live view and that should be able to light this product a little bit better. So it's looking pretty good there. Now what I'm going to do is zoom back in my camera and we'll just get a nice and kind of a close up here and I probably could change my camera shooting angle but let's just go with this and we're gonna see how it is so inside of the software you're gonna see this camera menu down here and what this allows is we can actually make full adjustments to all our camera settings through mouse click so we can change our shutter speed aperture white balance ISO and really optimize our camera settings for our lighting what I'll probably just do is just do a quick little pre snap and that rectangle that you see me drawing over top of my product is my crop marker so I can say only take a picture of what's inside this area and overall exposure actually looks quite good on this so I probably won't change too much nice thing about my camera settings is they will be retained from shot to shot now the last thing we're gonna do is just zoom in nice and up close in a one-to-one -one view and we're just gonna go ahead and adjust our focal point here so we're gonna choose something with detail it looks like our cameras doing pretty good with the autofocus if we ever needed to we can adjust our focal point manually using these drive lens arrows and now that I've set my focal point that will remain fixed as well for the 360 set of images. Now probably what I'll do here is I'm actually not going to do a crop. The nice thing about one of our USB turn turntables or a manual turntable is you can do a pre-rotate. Uh, with this shutter release turntable it's actually not an option although I'm sure a lot of shutter release turntables do have a pre-rotate option. Um, that's just a benefit just to ensure that you position your object in the center of the turntable so um, what and you can also do a pre-crop and and uh, it's only going to take a picture obviously what's inside that cropped area so this looks pretty good here let's just go ahead and get started with the workflow I'm just going to delete this image that I would previously shot now what I will do is connect my shutter release cable to my camera we will hit the 360 shooting mode button. We will choose our shutter release turntable option. Uh, we're also going to specify the number of frames. On, again, on the turntable, I'd specified every, uh, specified every 15 degrees, which is a total of 24 frames, so I'll match that number up in here. Um, we do have preset numbers, but you can also enter a custom value. Uh, and then last, we're going to do manual snap, but we're choosing manual snap because the trigger is actually going to be triggered through the... Uh, through the turntable sending the shutter release uh, uh, command so I'm gonna hit start here and what I will do is hit start on my turntable and that will automate everything directly for us the turntable will turn stop and then automatically capture that image and as the image is captured it's gonna be uploaded directly into the Shutterstream 360 software
Okay, now we've completed our total capture of 24 frames. We can use our bat select all. Uh, well, the other thing is you can go and in inspect each image if you did want, but um, I will go and select all and then enter into our editing tool. Now, uh, we're gonna see, obviously, we probably wanna pre-crop this. So what we wanna do is we've got a feature in here that's called uh, view alignment, and it's gonna overlay every single frame over top of each other and give us a transparent understanding of uh, basically where uh, the product rotated so that we can go ahead and do our crop after the fact. So there's the product here and what I'm gonna do is use my crop tool and just crop around my subject so that nothing's falling out and that's looking quite good there. Let me just adjust it a tad. Alright so we're gonna say that looks good. I can hit apply to all in a batch process. It'll race through and crop all those images. Now that we've done our batch crop, we do have other editing tools inside of here. For instance, if we want to make some adjustments to our, um, you know, our colors, we can use our color temperature and tint. Uh, we can increase our image, you know, enhancement using our sharpness tool. We can do a lot of different features and functionality inside of here just to kind of optimize our images. And they are batch um, available as well. So I can actually hit apply to all in a batch process. It'll apply those editing changes to the entire set of images. Now my last step will be to output these images. I'm going to call this, uh, let's call this plush toy dash. It's going to battery name. It'll battery size. Uh, maybe we want all these that say, uh, let's say a thousand pixels wide. Um, it's going to name them sequentially. I'll hit OK and it's going to again batch process all those to whatever save to location I had specified, which was this folder right here. And we can see all the individual frames being output. So then our last step will be to open up our included 360 view creator application. So right now we're just outputting the images. You can output in multiple different formats, JPEG, RAW, TIFF, PNG. Um, I just chose JPEG and what I'm gonna do now is, let me just minimize this, drag and drop into the included 360 view creator where it's gonna create our interactive 360 product view. So we'll give that a second to, uh, to load. And then we're gonna be able to see the, uh, again, that 360 result that we'd created, which is right here. Um, you can see it's a little bit off center. I'll just call this plush toy. And uh, you can save it locally. You can also upload directly to our 360 server. All these 360 views are fully interactive. You can do deep zoom, change the color of the buttons, upload your own buttons. Um, we do have a pretty good tutorial video on the 360 view creator software that dives into that a bit more. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at our output file here and see what we'd created in just a couple minutes.